I get asked the question a lot, what power supply or what wattage should I be looking for in my new gaming PC? Well, this is a kind of a way to go about answering that question. I'm going to do a tech FAQs episode answering that specific question, so take a look at that on a fairly close Saturday from now. But for this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the real-world power draws of each of these GPUs. Now I asked on Twitter what CPU I should use to test this with and the general response was the 8700K so that's what I'm using in this build. To keep all the other overheads down I'm using an ITX motherboard, not that that matters that much, and a single M.2 NVMe SSD for all of my testing and that's basically it. It's, I'm using a 750 watt power supply in this system, it is an XFX uh, X edition series uh, and it's an 80 plus bronze unit I think so there's definitely some level of e efficiency difference but being an 80 plus unit, even though it's a little bit older, should still have at least 80% efficiency and therefore uh, is uh, hopefully going to be interesting for the test. Now the cards I'm going to be testing with here, well, they may not be necessarily available or available at the price you want them to be, um, unfortunately for many reasons, uh, will be the uh, GTX 1080 Ti, 1080, 1070, 1060 and an RX 580. I'd also like to test the Vega 56 or 64, but I just don't have one available and because of the aforementioned kind of limited stock, I just can't get my hands on right one right now, so we're going to have to do without for the moment. I'm also going to be including the uh, average cost if you were to spend three hours a day on average gaming for an entire year with 13p per kilowatt as the energy usage cost. That's what it is for me here. It may vary with you, so feel free to alter the calculation based on the wattages that I can provide for you here. So first of all, let's uh, let's go through the, the testing methodology. Now to keep this nice and consistent. I can't really play a game as the, the overall wattage will change depending on the card and what I'm looking at and all that sort of stuff. So for, for ease of use here and ease of testing, I'm using the built-in GTA 5 benchmark. Uh, I'm using the uh, peak number you can read from the uh, power meter that is connected uh, to the back of the power supply or to the, the cable that connects to the back of the power supply. Uh, and that's, uh, I've got footage of all of those test runs, so I will run a f uh, through a few of those while we're going through the results but obviously uh, depending on what you're looking at in the game the load will change so this is a very rough approximation especially when it comes to the overall cost but there's also some interesting bits I want to pick out here. I should also mention that I was testing at 4k so the FPS numbers that I'm including alongside the wattage and cost numbers uh, are a little bit deflated for stuff like the RX 580 and the 1060 but uh, I felt like this was a good way to actually fully load the GPU rather than trying to stress the CPU and GPU in any way, which again also comes on to uh, something that I'll well, come on to in a second. So let's jump into it. With a 1080 Ti, you're looking at 110 FPS on very high settings in GTA 5, with a total uh, sort of rough average power draw under load of 346 watts. At idle, the system was running about 94 watts, which is pretty nice to see, and obviously um, if you are looking for an FPS per watt value, it's 0.32, so 0.32 FPS per watt that you need to put in to get that out if you like. Um, and if you're gaming on it for three hours a day on average across 365 days a year, obviously some days you're gaming you know, none, some days you're gaming 10 hours in a row, if it balances out to let's say an average of three hours a day, uh, you're looking at £49 and 25 pence for uh, for that uh, graphics card in this sort of system. The GTX 1080 gets 87 FPS, has an idle wattage of 79 watts, which really isn't too much lower than the 1080 Ti, which is actually pretty impressive, and the load wattage was 271 watts. If you were looking again for the FPS per watt value, this is actually the same, 0.32, and if you want to power the card for the year for again that three hours on average over 365 days, you're looking at 30 eight pounds and 58 pence. The GTX 1070 got 67 FPS in very high settings on GTA at 4K with an idle wattage of 81 and a sort of peak average wattage of 228. If you're looking for an FPS per watt value, that's 0.29. And of course, if you're looking for the price for a year, you're looking at £32.45 compared to the 1080s 38 and to the 1080ti's 49. The GTX 1060 is a fair bit lower at 50 FPS average with then an idle wattage of 85 watts, slightly higher than the 1070s, which really shows you how well they can all throttle down so that it's basically within margin of error for the idle. Um, with the load wattage, 
wattage you're looking at 184 watts total for the entire system with an FPS per watt value of 0.27 and a total cost again for that three hours on average uh, for 365 days uh, you're looking at 26 pounds and 19 pence and finally the RX 580 actually ran at 44 FPS which is a little bit lower than the 1060 uh, you're looking at an idle wattage of 112 which is actually higher than the 1080i's idle wattage and uh, kind of goes to show a few things I'll let you make your own conclusions about that one but uh, in terms of the load wattage you're looking at 249 with an average uh, with an FPS per watt uh, value of 0.18 the lowest we've seen here and a price per year of 35 pounds and 45 pence that actually puts the RX 580 in terms of its power usage and its cost just over the 1070 and just below the 1080 so it's actually a fairly power hungry card in in the scheme of Nvidia versus AMD here obviously slightly unfair comparison but nonetheless just to let you know if you do pick up a 580 in its stock configuration or at least this Strix one anyway uh, is going to be a decent bit uh, more power hungry than a 1060 that will run in certain games a little bit faster a little bit slower. Now there are a few key things I want to mention here there are a few assumptions that you have to make when you know making these sorts of calculations first of all the uh, peak wattage that I'm reporting here is just that it's the peak wattage for example if you're playing something like Rainbow Six Siege uh, probably two-thirds of your time is in game and you'll probably be using that sort of high you know peak wattage for each of these cards but uh, the other third of the time is staring at the the menu screens waiting for your friends to join your lobby waiting for you know character selection all that sort of stuff that is a lot less of a power draw on your system versus you know something like actually playing the game and actually going through and you know shooting people and all that sort of stuff so uh, there's there's certainly a few assumptions you have to make there also again the assumption of three hours a day may not be for everyone people may do less or more so that will also vary and again the cost per energy will vary where you are so that will also change too now for me the most interesting thing is that when playing games and if you're solely gaming and you're not intending on stressing the cpu and the gpu at the same time even a 1080 ti pulls less than 400 watts from the wall this of course is AC watts uh, and this has the, the conversion or uh, has the added wattage that the power supply effectively loses when it's converting from AC to DC. So you're actually probably looking at more like 350 to 360 watts that the actual system itself is using. So that's incredibly impressive. Now of course, if you plan to load up your CPU as well on top of loading up your graphics card, you can easily add another 100 watts to that sort of uh, kind of power draw there. So if you're looking for say a 1080 Ti, I would look for if you're going with a single 1080 Ti anyway something like a 650 watt power supply is probably the sweet spot for that as you go down the ranks you can really go down a fair bit with the each of the graphics cards uh, where you really don't need that big of a, a kind of wattage power supply i'm going to leave a comment and i'll pin it down below for you for the full results that i've collected for these graphics cards and the, the wattages they have drawn uh, if you want to you know use that data to uh, alter the equations to see how much it costs for you feel free to do that and let me know in the comments down below how much it costs for you where you are otherwise that is pretty much it i hope you enjoyed the video i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below whether you have these cards whether you don't whether you really care about how much electricity it costs you to, to run these uh, and also how many hours on average you play a year I'd, I'd be interested to know that too otherwise if you want to be a part of the tech faq uh, series i'm probably going to end up filming the next one before this even gets close to going out so uh, you won't be able to participate in that one but there will be plenty more coming in the future so feel free to follow me on twitter at techmgb if you're interested in these graphics cards, I'll hopefully leave some links in the description down below, although I can't guarantee that I can find them, or especially that I can find them at, the, at reasonable prices right now, so um, hopefully you can forgive that one. And uh, yeah, other than that, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in those comments down below. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.